yeah, that like as we've discussed in it previously on active measures and uh, like and it's coming like thick and fast now in the spirit of gradually then rapidly an enormous amount of negative data is emanating from germany um economically um they are in very 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 serious trouble and we're kind of getting to the point now where the mainstream media feels a bit more comfortable about talking about the fact that this is self-inflicted and this is the result of the, the anti-Russia sanctions, you know, because Germany's e economic prosperity and stability depended for decades on very cheap Russian oil and gas, which they electively cut off, cut themselves off from in February 2022. Yeah. So uh, what do we have in this uh, in this paper here? The IFO Institute is one of Germany's largest think tanks, and it's admitted that the German economy is stuck in crisis with both cyclical and structural factors having a negative impact. The crisis is first and foremost a structural one. Decarbonization, digitiz digitalization, demographic change, the coronavirus pandemic, the energy price shock, shock being the... Uh, the money word yeah. um, yeah. and China's changing role in the global economy are putting pressure on established business models and forcing companies to adjust their production structures. On the one hand, the labor force's potential, pot the labor force potential is developing less favorably and the population is aging faster. On the other, the structural change is particularly affecting manufacturing, which accounts in Germany for a significantly higher proportion of economic output. Energy intensive industries, which are responding to the high energy costs, as well as the mechanical engineering and the automotive industry, which are facing increasing competition from China, in addition to restructuring in connection with decarbonization and digitalization, carry more weight in that regard than in other countries. So what they're finding is that their their entire system could not withstand the shock of losing Russian energy right. and could not withstand the shock of losing the automotive art market to Chinese manufacturing, right? That's what I get. Yeah, yeah, but it's. Just, I mean, I think as well that, like, I mean, you, you mentioned the uh, the respective anti-German countries we both hail from, Alex. Um, I mean, like, growing up, like, I remember very well, like, like, say, like, go back to like ten years ago, Germany was built up as a model to emulate by many, uh, particularly on the left, um, of course, Germany not being a very uh, left-wing country at all, because they there was this perception that they, they were led by sensible, mature, sober people, that they, um, yeah, the, 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 they, they had a very strong economy that, that, that acted in the interest of its population and, 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 and afforded for full employment and meaning, meaningful employment for, for its workforce. And you, you, you it, at, at no point was it stated that this was entirely dependent on cheap Russian oil and gas, which is now gone, which they electively chose to cut themselves off from. Now, as we've discussed before, um, at some length on on active measures, uh, they, they there the media usually engages in this kind of verbal gymnasm to um skirt around the fact that this was self-inflicted and often like very clever language is deployed in order to conceal this rather inconvenient fact um they yeah they will refer as this paper does to an energy shock well why did that happen <laughs> they're, they're like who was responsible yeah. for this energy shock oh was it Ger was it germany like you know what i mean and so, like, I mean, as yeah. also as well, like, I mean, as someone who is like, like, kind of like lived in Germany, um, you know, like personally, like, if you if you get down into the kind of the monthly news that's emanating about like major German um, industries, particularly car makers, which I mean, that was Germany's bread and butter for a very long time, like you know, like Volkswagen, um, uh, the, the, the yeah, um, Mercedes Benz, like these were like flagship products and industries for Germany for a very long time, which did an enormous amount in terms of their soft power, their propaganda projection internationally, and they fucked themselves like royally 
But I mean, it's, it's quite remarkable, like that there's just like all of the data emerging and like all of these major manufacturers, which are now like leaving Germany in droves because it's expensive to operate there because it's bureau because of quote unquote bureaucracy. Um, but like, actually, at a base level, it's the energy costs, and it can't be admitted that this is Germany's own fault. Yeah, I mean, and this article seems to blame China's lack of appetite for German luxury cars as as a reason for their 64% plunge, which is insane. Um, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I, I, I think that, like, you know, what it look, it's China. China's a socialist country. Uh, the, the luxury cars were probably not a good long term strategy no. for the uh, for the for that market. Um, on the other hand, uh, China is making wonderful cars and they're able to do it at a very rapid pace. Um, yeah. And probably an enormous, an enormous, enormous scale, enormous yeah, scale. Enormous as scale. Well. And it's just like, yeah, that it's like that, that, that China has factories which is creating, which are creating um, like dozens of electric car per, cars per hour, like per yeah. hour. Like, yeah. and it's like, and, and they're doing so because, um, yes, the sanctions rang the bells at Russia and China's wedding. So you have like this country which has all of the resources in the world sitting under it verse um you know with um uh combined with china's uh technological innovation and nows which is just like i mean is expanding at a completely insane and uh, like like pace and scale to the point that we just, we almost can't understand it in the west like it's just not what we're used to you know um so yeah that like this is all i mean again i mean this for it was written um the the, the all of these major and Ch chinese industries. manufacturing oh. capacity yeah, 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 yeah. But it's just like oh yeah, all of these major German industries. I'm sorry, I'm are, I'm lagging. That's all right. That's okay. That's fine. Um, have you taken acid, Alex? Is that why you're lagging a bit? <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. That's sorry. right. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, no, mo moving it's, on. It's a poor internet connection here. But go on, go on. Well, no, I mean, it's just like all of these industries, which when I was when I was much younger, when I was in my 20s, or if not my, te my teenage years, were like talked up as like the kind of the jewels of Europe are now collapsing, you know, like like BASF, B-A-S-F, yeah. which is like a, a major petrochemical producer. Like Germ they used to talk about how Germany is our, our spiritual and home. And now they're just running away because it's not competitive to do business there. Yeah, uh, I mean, G Germany has uh, always kind of been the uh, economic powerhouse of Europe. So, um, what you know, what happens in Germany re reverberates through the European Union. Um, I do want to yeah. read some uh, excerpts from mm -hmm. this Reuters article. Uh, Volkswagen is considering closing factories in Germany for the first time, in a move that shows the mounting pres price pressure. Europe's top car maker faces from Asian rivals. So again, this is Europe's top car maker uh, closing closing factories. Um, Volkswagen, which drives most, uh, I'm sorry, VW, which drives most of Volkswagen's unit sales, is the first of its brands to undergo cost cutting drive, targeting 10 billion euros in savings by 2026 as it attempts to streamline spending to survive the transition to electric cars. Cars, uh, Karsten. Brzezki, the global head of macro at ING Research, said the decision highlighted the consequences of years of, ec of economic stagnation and structural change without growth. If such an industrial heavyweight has to close factories, it may be long over an, a long overdue wake-up call that Germany's economic policy measures need to be stepped up considerably. So, I mean, there. What 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 does that mean? That means that they. Uh, that means that Germany is going to have to. Uh, taste its own poison in terms of uh austerity um that's what the economic experts seem to be suggesting we have another yeah. article from uh deutsche Welle, the uh german state media more than sixty thousand people working in volkswagen's uh wolfsburg uh plant a city of 120,000 inhabitants so i mean this is an entire city that who's who's mm -hmm. based off of manufacturing for volkswagen uh, these wages are above average, making the company's labor costs the highest in the German car industry. 
So, I mean, this is a lot of people that are going to be uh, losing their livelihood, the the uh, comfort of living in uh, Europe's economic powerhouse and working for Europe's largest auto manufacturer um, who are going to be uh, basically jobless. And, and you know, I uh, that's always a recipe for um, social upheaval for uh, the far right, the far left. These yeah. kinds of parties to uh, rise in prominence. I mean, look what happened last time. Uh, there was <laughs> economic problems in Germany. You know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's another thing as well, which is like uh, what what's really interesting to me is like recently, a few a few weeks back, we had a bunch of state elections in Germany. Germany is um, they have similar to the U.S. system political system they have state and federal level elections now the state elections didn't get that much media uh, didn't generate that much media interest or they were quite significant so in one german state um afd came two percentage points behind um the spd now again in the spirit of hyper normalization on the one hand the media what that did dis acknowledge the fact that the results were so bad that the, the German Green Party's leadership quit like on mass because it was so bad um, and 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 it was very embarrassing for them. But then on the other hand, they were keen the, the media was keen to talk up this two percentage point win. Uh, yeah. uh, of the SPD over the AFD alternative for G Deutschland as like hugely significant and a widespread rejection of AFD's politics. Now, AFD, it does have um, some very questionable people at their upper echelons, but like they represent an, alter you know, an alternative, even if it's not the alternative that people actually, you know, need or would actively want. Um, and therefore, German citizens are voting for them in droves because they are desperate for something different at this point. They're desperate and they're not getting, they're not being listened to and they're not being spoken to by um, major German political parties. And we're seeing this all over Europe now. Um, yeah. it's, often said that, but it's often said that Berlin is the center of Europe, well, or the capital of Europe. Well, if that's the case, well, I mean, the, the entirety of Europe um, is, is desperately searching for some alternative. And for the most part, it can't be said that the reason for that is bad, uh, uh, bad economic performance caused by self-inflicted sanctions. And in Slovakia, a country which has since the start of the proxy war in Ukraine, in, in, um, uh, uh, instigated sanctions against Russia, but then when Robert Fico won, um, became president at the end of last year, um, has ended them. And then he got shot, of course, because that's what you do um, when a politician um, actually uh, reflects public will, as you you have them killed. Uh, is yeah, the 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 the, um, it, it, the entire continent is in real trouble, and we're going to be seeing a lot more of this um, everywhere. Like you know, like major like uh, company closures, like um, uh, ma like mass insolvencies, redundancies on, on a large scale. And it's like, well, what happens next? Well, as you say, it is a fertile, fertile breeding ground for the far right. And the mainstream would much rather the far right was in power slash in, in a position to take power than the far left. Sure. Yeah. Although, um, you know, there, there are, uh, again, cracks in the system with, uh, People like uh, Viktor Orban, with people like Vucic in Serbia, yes. with people like yes. Robert Fico in uh, Slovenia, um, who are uh, much, I mean, they are not pro-Russian by any means, particularly no. Orban, but um, are much more wary of confronting Russia. And uh, so so, so there, is, um, there is a growing alternative, which is not fascistic. Or no. fascist, I should say, um, which you know could could uh, serve as a model for uh, for Europe preventing its uh, free fall into um, obscurity and irrelevance, um, which I think yeah. its path currently uh, dictates. 
Hey everyone, um, if you enjoyed this video or, or any of our other content, uh, please give us a follow on Twitter or subscribe to us on YouTube. It will help us beat the algorithm oligarchs. Thank you.